Well, hello everyone, and greetings from beautiful Zion National Park. I'm here on my winter trip, and I've been to Death Valley already, and now here in Zion, and we're wrapping up this trip in a couple of days. And I'm trying something different this time. I'm doing less production in the field, and I'm trying to uh, not have this video production impact my experience uh, of, uh, of just sort of the pure joy of photographing in the field. Uh, so I'm trying to just do some minimal uh, videography at each of my setups and showing you the environment. And uh, then we'll talk about that later uh, in the studio as we're looking at the film and, and uh, let you know what was happening uh, as I was photographing. So hopefully that'll work out okay. And uh, as always, I thank you so much for watching. Hi everyone. Well, as I said in my intro, I did start my trip uh, in Death Valley. And when I first got to the valley, I wanted to find this little scene right here. Now, this is something that I had seen several other photographers do, and I thought it was pretty neat. I like this shape, and uh, I just wanted to find it for myself and, and see what it looked like and see if I could do something uh, maybe a little bit different with it. And so over the course of the uh, five days that I was in Death Valley, I went to this spot, I think, four different times. And rather than scatter those throughout the videos here, I'm just going to show everything to you from this location uh, here, here at the beginning. So I definitely tried uh, different kinds of things. Um, different types of light, and uh, although pretty much the same arrangement everywhere here, uh, this is kind of the one that I was really hoping would work out. This is a neat one where you wait till the foreground's in shadow, and then you're using a, a split uh, edge uh, neutral density uh, grad to um, a soft edge neutral density grad to hold back the the light here, but I didn't have any clouds, so that one didn't really work out. This one's a little dark on the foreground, but a sort of neat light here in the distance. This one I had good clouds uh, and neat raking light, but the colors kind of drab. This one ended up working better in black and white later. Now here, this one's pretty nice with, uh, with pink in the sky, although we have some better ones of those uh, coming up. But now we get to the best, and that was at the end of the day, and I set up, and I just sort of waited for things to happen. And after the sun went down, uh, this sky really lit up. Now, I have some other video I can show uh, from the actual, uh, at the spot, where the sun, the setting sun, was just ablaze uh, in the sky, and it was really, really beautiful. Uh, that was in a different direction than I was shooting, though, but that's okay. It ended up casting this really neat light over over the scene, and I uh, I really like these. I like the ones better, I think, where the uh, the the pink light from the sky is lighting up the foreground. This is these here are a little later where the uh, the sun was not, or sorry, the, the, the warm color was not on the ground. And those were okay, like if that's all I had, I think that would be fine. But I really, really like these uh, here, and I think I went with one of the slightly darker versions, so I have a little more detail in the, the pink clouds. But uh, I, overall, I was very, very happy with these color ones, and I, I think that worked out very, very nicely. Now, I also worked on a black and white, uh, I guess, almost each, each time I was there. So, not forget this one, though, we'll, we'll see that later. But uh, I went again every time I, I went, I think I, I uh, shot some black and white. This is kind of drab, although, you know, you could, could zip this up with some contrast. Um, I'll just sort of page through. These are my, uh, my contact proofs. And. Uh, so again, this is that sunset one where the, I didn't have any clouds in the sky. I was using the soft uh, edge grad to hold this back. Uh, and, you know, pretty good, pretty good clouds here, but not particularly great light on the ground. Here I had some interesting clouds, and 
Um, I was sort of excited about these at the time, although ultimately I don't think the cloud shapes really, uh, really work that well. Uh, although they're pretty interesting. Okay, forget these. That's we'll get to that one in a minute. So tried a couple of verticals here to do something else with these clouds because I kind of recognize they they need something a little different. Um, but here's where I ended up being the happiest. So. Um, again, here these have really nothing happening in the sky, but this one here is, I think, a real winner. I love the clouds in the sky, the beautiful raking light going across um, that just looks terrific in, in black and white. You know, the eye is drawn to these areas of highest contrast, and it just leads you right in uh, to this interesting shape in the mountain. And, of course, the, the clouds are just working very well. The next morning, I went to Zabriskie Point and walked way out on a high ridge uh, on the, the right side of Zabriskie, way up high on a narrow little trail, and it was so cold and so windy, and I found a, just a little wide spot where I could sort of pull off the trail and set up out of the way so other people could get past. and. Um, I, I first used my 200 millimeter lens, which are these three, and uh, as it turned out, ultimately I didn't like this arrangement that well. Um, the warm color is really nice, but I just ended up thinking this area down in here is kind of just kind of dead and not that interesting. So I switched to the 300 and got a tighter view. And I, I'm having a hard time explaining the color difference here. This is all Velvia 50. Uh, I think I think these were done first, uh, like I just said, and I think this, you know, the sun was further down and maybe just casting more of a warm glow uh, into the sky, and, and that would account for the warmth here. I don't think I used a warming filter on these. Um, but then as the sun was closer to to the horizon, that I think that warm glow went away, and it was more just lit by the just the, the blue sky, which is what uh, I think accounts for just sort of the, the more blue cool feeling of, of this piece. But I like the arrangement of this better. So I went with this transparency and just tried to color correct to get a little closer to this and add a little contrast because I think it's just a little flat and uh, ended up being pretty happy with this piece of Velvia. Next, I went to Titus Canyon and found this really neat little abstract in some of the polished rock there. Now, this part of Titus is not over on the Nevada side where, where you have that whole one-way stretch that goes through, which in itself is a really neat drive, and, and you ought to do it if you haven't. Uh, but uh, back in the park side, you can just drive up to the to the mouth of the canyon. It's a two-way road at that point. You can park there. There's a nice parking area and restrooms, and then you can leave your car and you can walk in a little bit. And well, you could walk as far as you wanted to, but I just walked in a little bit and looked for some abstract details and found these. Now, uh, this is the uh, uh, Velvia 50, and this is the Provia 100. And I ended up liking the uh, the Provia better because I just think the, the color is more normal. This this just went too purple and it's just not really um, not really what I wanted, but uh, I really like the uh, the Provia. I think it's a nice color palette and was just interested in this sort of abstract shape. This is a very difficult place to photograph. It's kind of the clamber up about like a five or six foot little dry fall area and just a little platform that was kind of hard to work in and hard to have your camera set up and your bag for your equipment, but uh, it worked out okay, and um, I think I was maybe more interested in, or thinking that I would do the black and white, it was maybe what I really had in mind, forget these for a moment, uh, and, I'm, and I really do like how the, the black and white worked out here, I just think um, maybe just because it's so abstract, maybe the, the black and white is, is a little better. Next I found this scene with uh, these low hills uh, with neat shadows and then an eroded uh, slope beyond it. And so I thought it was neat to make an arrangement like that. And um, I just tried to, uh, I envisioned this only in black and white, and I just tried to make a pleasing arrangement of these 
these uh, hill shapes with the uh, shadows and then the, uh, the eroded slope beyond with these neat patterns of things falling down. I just thought it made kind of a neat arrangement and I was happy to find this one. Uh, this is the kind of thing that works well in full sun uh, with black and white and so the shadows really add to uh, the story and the picture here and uh, Death Valley is just full of neat images like this. The next morning I went to this area with a boardwalk and where you can walk along this stream and um, and look out at the, the mountains and so forth here and um, I was hoping for interesting clouds in the sky but that really never materialized. I did use a split neutral density uh, filter to hold back the sky or the, the sunlit parts and, and that worked okay uh, for the most part but ultimately I just didn't end up liking it that well. Um, I also tried it in black and white here and I aimed the camera in a slightly different direction, same place, but just a slightly different direction. And I was pretty excited about these at the time. I kind of thought the tighter ones would, would work better, just as an abstract, but I just ended up not being really happy with it. Again, if I'd had some something happening in the sky here, it might be interesting. Even when I darkened the sky with a filter here, it's just, eh, it's just not that great. So I didn't end up... Uh, finishing these, but I thought maybe you would like to just see what I was working on anyway. Next I found these really neat three boulders sitting in a field with some interesting shapes beyond it. And uh, when I uh, set up to photograph it, I used my 300 and I really wanted it tighter, uh, like, like these. This was sort of my original vision, uh, no sky and and just the shapes like this. Um, but I'd shown the, the little iPhone video, I guess I must have done an Instagram story of that, uh, that video, and uh, Ryan McGinty commented that he liked it with Sky, and he called it the a long way from home, or a long journey from home, where he was envisioning these boulders having, you know, come from here, uh, rolling downhill, which indeed I, I'm sure they did. I had no thought of that at the time. Um, but uh, because of his comments, I, I went ahead and tried to work this one up, showing a little bit of sky and a little bit more uh, area here to sort of suggest where these uh, boulders came from. So thanks, uh, Ryan, for that, um, that suggestion, and uh, I'm pretty happy now with the way this image turned out. I should mention here that on these uh, tighter versions here, I was using my 300 millimeter lens and I was closer to these boulders to get this arrangement that I really wanted, but the depth of field was such that I just couldn't make it work uh, acceptably. I tried all the front uh, tilt that I could do and I just couldn't get everything to, uh, to focus properly, even stopping way, way down. So that's why I ended up pulling back and switching to a wider lens, and that let me uh, get everything in focus, and so I was much happier with the focus on this one with the 200 where I pulled back a little bit and planned to just crop in, and that's perfectly acceptable to do, and in this case, it worked out well. Later in the afternoon, I wandered out into the salt flats, and I found another one of these little streams leading off into the distance. This is becoming a bit of a theme for this trip. You've already seen one of those, and here's another one, and there'll be more coming up. So I was really lucky to kind of find those kind of conditions. And uh, I only envisioned this as black and white, no color at all here. Um, I did use a different uh, color filters to try to uh, adjust the contrast. So I used a K2 yellow filter and an orange filter, and then the 25A deep red. Uh, which I think is this one, it darkened the sky the most, and even though the proof looks a little dark here, there's, there's plenty of detail, so this is the one I ended up going with. Um, I, I, I think the cloud sort of sneaking in works really well. The cloud's too far over here, but I, I kind of like it right here, and nice dark sky, and you know, great contrast, and still some nice uh, shadow detail in that cliff. So um, it's always fun to have that meandering shape of, uh, of a leading line wandering through the image and then le leading you into the background. So I thought this one worked out very well. 
At sunset, I went back to Zabriskie Point and just photographed this time from the overlook. Uh, I didn't uh, make any video this time, unfortunately. I was just, just concentrating on, on photographing. But we had really nice soft light. And uh, this is my, with my 300 lens. And I'm just sort of looking down into one of these S-curves. And I just love the, the really pretty directional light that's sort of shadowed on this side and highlighted on this side. And in post, I kind of accentuated that and, and um, improved the contrast a little bit. And... I uh, just made it more like I was sort of feeling it that night. It cropped in just a little bit, and um, I, I just think this is a such a nice little figure here, and I'm really happy to add this uh, image to my uh, several from, from Zabriskie that I've uh, enjoyed over the years. Well, that's it for the first couple of days from my January trip to Death Valley. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I was up to. And I look forward to bringing you the rest of the trip in an upcoming video. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next